Today on Hack Tip, we're mounting XFAT drives in Linux, and this Hack Tip is brought to you by Eero. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are mounting XFAT drives in Linux. Now, before I get started, make sure to hit up hack5.org slash RSVP for our October 20th launch event in San Francisco. We're gonna be announcing new products. Tickets are limited, but the first 100 guests will get something new from Hack 5 for free. And again, that was hack5.org slash RSVP. Now on to today's segment. So today we are chatting about mounting XFAT drives, which can lead to some complications within Linux. Once you fix the problem though, you shouldn't have any issues after that. So let's get right into the fix. And then after the break, I will actually go into explaining why this happens. Now, if I pull up my computer here and I'm gonna go ahead and stick this flash drive into the port. There we go. I'm gonna wait a few seconds and then, okay, this error pops up. It says, unable to mount Riker. That's the name of my flash drive because Star Trek error mounting dev SDA1 at media snubs Riker, command line mount dash T XFAT tac O, exited with non-zero, exit status 32, mount unknown file system type XFAT blah, 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 blah. Okay, we get the point, it didn't work. In newer Linux operating systems though, you can easily fix this error by pulling up your terminal and then typing in sudo apt-get install xfat-fuse xfat-utils. Now you just have to wait a few seconds, follow the prompts, and then you're done. Okay, so this command installs a couple of packages that allow XFAT drives to be read and written accordingly. Now anytime you plug in an XFAT formatted drive, it should automatically work and work like normal. Now if it doesn't, if you're on an older operating system, for example, there is a way to fix that where it does auto mount for you as well. All you have to do is plug in your drive again, and then in the terminal type in sudo make dir, make directory, mkdir, slash media, slash xfat, and you can actually name that xfat folder anything really, it doesn't really matter. This is going to create a directory as a mounting point for your flash drive. And then after that, you wanna type in sudo fdisk tac l. So this will show you the location name of the flash drive, which in my case, it just so happens to be SDB1, which stands for the first partition of the second device, hence B and one. Ha, ah, learn something new every day. Now I know this to be the case because if I actually unplug my drive and then I do that command again, that SDB1 disappears from the output all together. All right, once you have that figured out and what your flash drive location name is called, and you've made your new subdirectory, type in sudo mount tac t xfat slash dev slash sdb1 slash media slash xfat. So this is going to mount an xfat file system from location dev sdb1 to media xfat. Now your xfat drive will automatically open up on your Linux machine and to unmount it, you simply type in sudo umount slash dev slash sdb1 or whatever your location name is. And that's it, now you're done. But why in the world is this a problem in the first place? I'm going to discuss why XFAT breaks in Linux right after a word from our sponsor. When you're looking to improve your wireless network, making sure your entire home has a strong signal is a must. That is where Eero comes in. They are launching the very first second generation mesh Wi-Fi system that comes with one Eero and one to two beacons. These are mesh access points. They are not extenders. They are smaller, they plug into an outlet, they have an ambient night Light, and they are more powerful than the originals. But if you already have the originals, that's okay too. Eero has you covered. You can get these, they are backwards compatible and they can be purchased separately. Systems altogether start at $3.99 for all three components, but if you wanna just buy one beacon, you totally can and those are $1.49 each. We've gotten a chance to test these in the warehouse where our wireless usually does not reach one end to another. The Eero mesh does a great job of fixing that headache and giving me the speeds that I pay for from my ISP. 
ISP. Plus, it was very easy to set up and it was reliable. Eero is also announcing the Eero Plus subscription, which includes advanced network security monitoring, supplementing those features that you already get for free built in with the device. And they also include content filtering, which is great for houses with kids. Now with any system, you get automatic updates, two-factor authentication for admin access, and Eero's backing with a bug bounty program and third-party audits. We've also got a coupon code for you. So for free overnight shipping to the US or Canada, visit Eero.com and at checkout just select overnight shipping, then enter hack tip, that's H-A-K tip, to make it free. Check it out and learn more at Eero.com. We are now back with XFAT in Linux. So, as I teased previously, why does this format for external drives seem to cause such a headache with Linux machines? XFAT stands for Extended File Allocation Table, and it's a Microsoft file system. They introduced it way back in 2006, and it's proprietary, and Microsoft owns the patent for it. XFAT is best used whenever NTFS isn't the best option, or FAT32 formatting is pretty much out of the question because of its file size limit of four gigabytes. SDXC cards that you use in digital cameras these days are defaulted to XFAT. Since they allow for larger file sizes, this is often the best scenario, especially if you're saving larger files, for example, like if you're recording videos at a convention like I do all the time. I need more than four gigabytes per file. SDXC cards also use XFAT because this allows for faster write speeds because XFAT reduces the file system overhead. So it seems awesome. But unfortunately, since Microsoft owns the patent and Linux is open source, they don't quite agree with each other. Microsoft has not released the complete spec and holds a restrictive license over XFAT. And since re-implementing XFAT functionality requires a software patent agreement with Microsoft, Linux isn't able to build this into the operating system. So now we have reverse engineered implementations that were made by third parties to allow you to work with XFAT in Linux. The one I used in particular was called Fuse, which was created in 2010 and short for file system in user space, which allows you to work with file systems without going through the kernel. This also means that you don't need root to be able to use the system, XFAT, hmm, which is pretty cool. XFAT utils, of course, includes all of the utilities that are needed to work within that format as well. You might still run into some limitations when using this package, but generally you can read and write to the drive as normal. Now, since this is a sticky subject when it comes to legalities of using XFAT within Linux, you should definitely consider your own uses and needs. And with that, I think we're done. So be sure to subscribe to YouTube and it's youtube.com slash hack5 and make sure to hit that like button if you get some good info out of this episode. Until then, I want to hear your feedback. Comment below. Be sure to check out our sister show and I hope to see you at the event on October 20th. It's going to be so much fun. I'll be there along with all the internets as usual, reminding you to trust your technolust. <laughs>